It is spooky season. So time to read horror, right? No, I'll not be reading any horror this Halloween season or any other in the future. Horror is like a seasonal genre, right? Halloween is approaching and it seems like all the booktubers and bookstagrammers and probably book talk, but I don't know because I'm not on TikTok. All the seasonal autumnal reads that they're either reading or recommending are one of two things. Cozy reads for fall or horror because it's October. That's what we read. Um, I really hate horror. <laughs> if I know that that is the main thing that a book is offering me, I am not going to read it. I also hate it in film. Film has some advantages over books in making things really scary in that they have sounds, suspenseful music, sound effects. Film also has jump scares, which I think is harder to pull off in a book. Books only have words, but for a good author, that is enough. Dan Wells, who I only know from the Writing Excuses podcast, <laughs> which he's not on anymore. He and Sanderson have their own YouTube channel podcast that they do now, um, but he is a horror writer. And one of the things that he says is really important for someone writing in the horror genre is to try to engage all the senses. You want readers to be aware of what a room might smell like, feel like, sound like. All that extra sensory input to really bring up those deeper feelings of fear and terror. Uh, no, no thank you. I hate it, it is not for me. It is never a feeling that I seek out. I don't choose to be scared. I already get scared easily. I have anxiety. Why would I want to feed into that? That's the part of my life that I wish would be lesser, so I'm not going to feed it and try to uh, cultivate that part of my life and make it grow, no matter what the season is. But also, beyond just being a person with anxiety, not wanting to feed into that with the horror genre, I also have a super overactive and vivid imagination. Books create imagery and give me an emotional response that is pretty strong and it stays with me after I finish reading a book. I also have really vivid and realistic dreams. Sometimes I dream about what I'm reading about over 10 years later and I still remember some of the dreams I had about the Hunger Games books. So the feelings that I have while I'm reading a book, I don't just have while I'm reading. The feelings stay after I set the book down. So for people who enjoy reading a horror book, who can pick it up and read it and go, ooh, this is scary, and then put it down, that was a good book, on with my life. That doesn't work for me because the feelings from that are going to stay with me. Those feelings that I don't like and the imagery that I don't want, those stick. And the more impactful that the emotions and the imagery are, the longer they stay with me. Years even. Which is probably why I love some of the books from my childhood so much, like Anne of Green Gables and The Hobbit. The feelings I had from them have stuck with me, so I love to pull them off my shelf and reread them. I don't want that feeling with a horror book. I don't like to be scared. I don't want to have nightmares, so I don't want to feed into that with more stories that could possibly stay with me for years later. 10 years down the road, I don't want to open my eyes in the night and think, oh, there's that scary thing that I read about. And I did used to wonder how anyone could want to watch a scary movie or choose to read a horror book. It didn't make any sense to me. I didn't know that other people could enjoy the story, enjoy that scared feeling for a short time, and then be done. Because that's not how it works for me. So this fall season, this spooky time of year, I'll not be reading any horror books, nothing even slightly scary. I'm not against them. Read them if you want to, but I will not choose to. So go get yourself scared. I'm gonna go get cozy, maybe go get some candy, and I'll see you back here for some more videos. Bye.